I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, take the roll. Brian, you got to unmute, unmute Becky. Here I am. Morris, Mayor O'Connor? Here. Morissette? Be here. Alms? He's he's muted. There we go. Oh, oh. he was unmuted. <laughs> Try again, Bill. Here. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Weber? Here. Ekins Hoggett? She muted? Here. Oh. Paul? Here. I think you skipped a zeal. <laughs> Sorry, Paul Dezeal. <laughs> Here. Sorry, Paul. No worries. All right. Uh, we have uh, presentations from, or a presentation from the Wisconsin Department of Transportation regarding State Highway, State Trunk Highway 35 and the Hanley Road Roundabout Repaving Project. Are they on? Uh, Mr. Mayor, they were having a little bit of difficulty getting signed in, so we may just need a minute. Um, we could go to the public hearing, perhaps. Is this, hold on one sec, is it the DOT VZS? Brian, do you want to mute that one? That must be it. Oh, there's somebody. Here we go. You see it, Brian? Oh, yeah. I do, yeah. Hey, Aaron, just an FYI, we're, we're having a hard time hearing you. All right, DOT, you ready? Yeah, absolutely. It's all yours. Okay, can I have control of the screen, please? Let's see. You should just be able to, to uh, share your screen. Okay, let me find that. Share screen. The host has disabled participants from screen sharing. Okay, go ahead and try it again. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Yep. Okay. Let me get back to the start. So this is our uh, our project number. It's going to be happening on Hanley Road at the interchange over at 35, State Highway 35. My name is Vidar Sanchez, and I'm the project leader, and Nicholas Pitch is the project manager. So the purpose of this, this presentation is threefold, is to first explain the, the need why we're doing the project, the second is to just explain what the steps of the project will look like and then how that will impact traffic. Here you can see a, a map of St. Croix County. Project is down here, City of Hudson. Looking closer, there's I-94. This is State Highway 35. We're not seeing that. I, we're still seeing the project Is location. it lagging? It, it might be lagging. No, this could be, yeah, this can happen sometimes. What are you guys seeing now? The first slide. Okay, there's something I can do. I can disconnect from my VPN. There's a chance that I may have to reconnect to the call, but that may increase my bandwidth. Um, I apologize, let me see, just a second. So we're seeing- There you go. There we go. Project location. Is it catching up? Yeah, it must yes. be. Seeing it now, yeah. Okay, project location. Do you see the close up of the project boundaries? Nope. No. Nope. Aerial view. I wonder if I could email the file over and then someone in in the that's connected. 
um, where the wire could drive the PowerPoint because it's not going to show, it's not going to keep up very well. Don't know if you guys have experienced this, but this tends to happen when we have presentations. Um, I can turn off my video and hope to use less bandwidth. Let me see about that. Or just give us an executive summary. I think maybe about. you're sharing your wrong screen. Oh, well, now it's. <laughs> we, we see the screen with the uh, slide notes underneath it. Okay. Can you see anything now? Original. You see the presentation with the slide notes. Yeah. So it's project kind of location, the, the first. Scenes, not the presentation. Yeah, it's lagging. There's. Because on my screen, it shows the presentation. <laughs> Nothing else. Can you just go through it verbally for now? And then. You can yeah, absolutely. The Are you guys familiar with the area? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. OK. OK. So the project itself, as you know, the roadway is uh, showing quite a bit of distress. It's having um, it's got alligator cracking. It's got rutting. Um, it's been patched, but it, it's deteriorating quickly. So the intent of the program is to address that and also address some curb ramps that are along the multi-use trail, the bicycle trail that is in the area. So um, that's the plan is to do a melon overlay of that damaged area between the two roundabouts. And then the city of Hudson has asked that we pave the, the stretch of Hanley Road that connects Old State Highway 35 to the roundabout area. So this is going to work at, uh, be done in three stages. The first stage is to do the curb ramp work, which is going to be two curb ramps on the western roundabout. That's the south on-ramp lane and curb ramp on the east roundabout. Also, that's the northbound on-ramp lane. And then one curb ramp at Old State Highway 35. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to close the blow-by lane, the bypass lane, on the western roundabout going from um, eastbound Hanley to southbound 35, State Highway 35. There'll still be access to southbound 35, but it'll be through the roundabout. It'll only be that blow-by lane that will be closed. And the um, main lane is going to be narrowed a little bit to allow for curb and gutter work um, at that intersection, at, at that crosswalk. Um, similarly, on the western roundabout, there's going to be a restriction at those curb ramps, but all, all directions of travel are going to be accessible during this, this phase. That's stage one. Stage two is going to be a closure of the bridge and um, the stretch of Hanley between Old State Highway 35 and the roundabouts. The only things that are going to be open during stage two are going to be the off ramp from 35 south onto Hanley Road. So traffic will still be able to go south to west. And likewise, there's still going to be traffic allowed to go from Hanley Road headed east onto southbound 35. Everything else is going to be channeled away along Hanley Road to Carmichael and then heading up to I-94 and, um, and traffic coming from uh, Old State Highway 35 would just head north, catch County N to County U up to I-94. Um, so that's going to be stage two. The, it's, it's a small project. Uh, in terms of the mill and overlay, which is going to be the main component of this stage. But because it is not just a straight shot, it is going to require a few uh, more setups and teardowns. So it is going to slow the rate of production.
but it should still be, we're, I can talk more about the schedule, but we're being very cautious in terms of what we think we can do. So it'll only be, it won't be slower than we anticipate if anything, it'll be faster. Um, so then stage three is gonna be, the bridge is gonna be back open. The, let's see. The, what's going to be paved in stage three are going to be those blow by lanes that remained open during stage two. So then we'll swap from having the center line closed to having center line open and the blow by lanes that were closed in stage two will be paved on in stage three. And that will be, that will be the three stages of the project. Um, Let's see, I kind of glossed over the detours without the pictures, it wasn't easy to paint that picture. Um, we also have the information on the budget. This, this is a state municipal agreement contract and the state is covering 80% of the project. The city is covering 20% of the project. Um, there's a section that the city is covering 100%, which is from the western or the eastern limit of the eastern roundabout to Old State Highway 35. That's gonna all be repaved as well. We're using a higher grade ag uh, um, asphalt mix in order to hopefully prevent the, the stress that's happening on this roadway. We're hoping that we don't have to come back and do this again anytime soon. Um, it's just those Turning motions can actually put a lot more torque on the pavement itself. And then with the salt and snow, um, yeah, they've really gotten churned up. So I don't, I don't know if I missed it. Uh, when's the start date and what is your expectation for the length of the project? The project itself, yes. Um, so this is all very expedited process. The, this project came out of scoping and June, and here we are almost in 90% um, review. So we're moving very fast on this project. It's gonna be let in July, and it's gonna start, construction is gonna start end of August, probably around August 23rd. So it's gonna come up pretty quick. And we're gonna close down for Labor Day, and then we're gonna get going, and we anticipate having everything done by October 15th at the latest. And again, that, that's a um, conservative estimate. It could be faster, but we're definitely trying to avoid getting into cold weather paving for this project, for such a small project. Um, yeah, to keep the cost down. Thank you. Yeah. I have a couple of questions, unless you have Absolutely. Um, so Bill Alms, District 2, so this is within my district uh, boundary at least. A uh, few questions, just so that I'm understanding it correctly. Stage one and stage three, there is one lane closure across the stretch of the roundabouts. Is that accurate? It's just dependent on which lane. And stage three, there will be two two lanes closed. There's going to be the lane, the blow by lane. So I don't, I don't know if you have a map of that area that you can well, see right I, now. I know it, but um, yes, you're saying two lanes, one in each direction right? Yes, correct. That's okay. Yeah. So, um, and that happens in stage one as well. In stage one, it'll just be one lane. It'll be kind of a staging area. Oh, I see. Uh, and that'll just be on the Southern side of the, of Hanley. Understood. So yes. there's, as you can imagine, there's quite a bit of truck truck traffic. Yes. Here, right? Yes. Um, is it your intention to, um, detour all trucks during the, the entire construction because I know they do take up both lanes going both directions. Yes. Um, the intention is to send them through the roundabout during straight stage one. Um, I did run the, on, on my design software, I do have an auto turn feature with it, which allows me to do vehicle tracking. Mm -hmm. So I was able to run some large trucks through that, that gap since we are restricting right between the two, pedestrian um, curb ramps, we are restricting that 
passageway to 12 feet, but there the trucks should be able to be mostly going straight by the time they hit that that gap. Um, okay. It would be beneficial if they did go the other direction. I, I have been in communication with Uline, uh, have, the Uline okay. building. Mm -hmm. And so they're aware of the project. They know what it's going to entail, and they know that Carmichael is an option for got it for that movement there. Another one. I, I can definitely make a note and reach out to them to remind them as the time gets closer. I can put that maybe in the in the pre-construction meeting for somebody to to reach out to them to just give Perfect. them a heads up. You line and, and quite honestly, uh, a lot of the businesses within the St. Croix uh, business park. Um, we will do a press release okay. and we have a website. We've, we've sent out mailings to all the businesses and residences. Some have come back. So I, I have to do, uh, check in, gotcha. check up on those. A uh, couple of more questions, if, yes. if I may. Um, you said higher grade asphalt mix. Obviously, with assault and, and snow coverage, that's a, that's one of the reasons for cracking. But is it also not the weight of the of the semi vehicle traffic? And if so, is there something that you can do to sort of manage that as well? Do you know what I'm asking? Yes, yes, uh, absolutely. And that's taken into consideration. We do a, a, a calculation that determines what percentage of the traffic is larger vehicles. And then that, to be honest, that's the controlling factor with most design because passenger vehicles doesn't, don't ever really come close to having the same level of impact. So that, that is the driving factor on our design um, is, choices. Where is that data coming from? Is that that's, that's fast or current? Um, the traffic volume data, I would have to pull it up. I just want to, you understand what I'm saying. You, you know, I've I do that, that, that we're talking current, current values, not yeah. some, something exactly. that was prepared 10 years ago. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I yeah. So this all came out with the scoping, uh, package that came out in the summer. So I assume they're using the, the, the most recent data, but that's that's just me making assumptions. So I, I want to see if I can find that. You know, I'm sorry, I don't have that in front of me. I have it saying that they're using Design ADT of 2041. So they do, they have forecasts that go all the way out for another 20 years and show show some growth, but current you numbers. See what I'm getting at. I just want to make sure that it's based on current data versus, like you said, you know, even five years ago. Sure. Right? Yeah. Um, and then the last question I have is, you know, the roundabouts themselves or the the I don't know, I think they have pavers in the middle of that round section there. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whenever I'm traveling that, and I'm sure all of my neighbors, whenever we're traveling that, whenever we see a semi go in there, while there's two lanes, it's really one lane. Um, right. Is there, is there any consideration to narrow that sort of round piece? Because I, I do see trucks going over that round piece as well. Um, just not enough. Yeah, that that's I, I understand what you're getting at, and it it speaks to people's lack of <laughs> common sense to give it, give the truck space. But yeah, so that that's a traffic control issue, I believe. But that's not something that I've run into or explored. I can look into that further and get back to you. Sure. I mean, I'm not saying that. You know, I mean everybody's doing their due diligence knowing that the trucks are taking up too. I guess my point is, is that, is it, is it not designed well for trucks space-wise? And mm -hmm. yeah. And I don't know, I don't mean to put you on the spot there with that question, but. No, I'm thinking about it and, and it's tough because this, these were designed 
10, 13 years ago. So whatever the standards they view, they were using then may have changed and we do it differently now. Um, but because it is just a mill and overlay and the basic geometry of the interchange is not being altered, what could be altered is the paint, the markings, to kind of keep the vehicles in their area. But if you look at it, they're, they're, they go from two lanes to one lane. And I think the thought was to assume that the trucks were going to be kind of weaving between the lanes. And that's why it's not two lanes going north and south on the roundabouts. But you're saying that even on the east-west movement, they're still kind of jumping lanes. It's more, sorry, it's more west to east. Right? West to, yes. Yes. So. Because there's two, as you go west to east, there's two entering the roundabout, entering that first roundabout to the west. There's mm -hmm. two lanes. And, mm -hmm. and then it's two lanes, I believe, all the way around that i don't know if it goes down to one over the bridge but you see my point and yes you know, yes as, as we redid handling a couple of years ago as the city um and i know that we had conversations with, uh, with the county and the state as far as how far we could go up to the roundabouts or or mm -hmm. that not you know as we as we re-looked at re-looked at the mill and overlay we took the additional step of looking at the safety measures of, of Hanley and yes. completely revamped that. So that's all I'm suggesting is that we're looking at it from a from a use standpoint now and a safety standpoint and just making sure that, yes, this is right for, what is it, maybe 75% of its trucks? I, I, I don't know. It's a very large percentage usage of trucks, yes? Right. Correct. So that's all I'm kind of questioning people are not there. Yes. Um, and, and Bill, if I may chime in for a second, uh, these kind of things are, are stuff that we will definitely uh, work with WestDOT and getting figured out. Perfect. In regards to the, the trucks going through the roundabout, um, uh, there, those uh, that concrete island in, kind of in the middle of the roundabout, it, it gives extra space for the trucks to, to maneuver as well. So that's why that concrete island is there. and. If we need to move some striping to give the truck some extra space and whatnot, we can certainly work through that uh, with the project here too. So thank you, Dean. Yep. Vidor, you mentioned uh, multi-use pathways, and uh, I think were you talking about ramps or what? What changes are going to occur relative to them, to the pathways? Is there any change or any upgrade? It's or both. It's mostly upgrades to match ADA standards. It's grade, grades, basically. And um, we were out there, we measured the, the slopes going, the cross slopes and the running slopes. And they aren't far out of compliance, but once you cross that threshold of not being compliant, uh, any time that the state comes through and uses federal money for a project and there are curb ramps present, if they're not up to standard, then they have to be up updated. So that's the reason for that. And that's the reason why we're not touching every single one, but rather two here, two there, and one at the very end, or, or one, one, and two, rather. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? So again, minor, minor changes. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. <clears throat> All right. Uh, under public hearings, discussion of possible action on amendments to Municipal Code Chapter 99-21, Chickens, the Chicken Code update. Quickly, a couple things. Brian, can you take the screen share off? You know, we can't, we can't hear you, Aaron. Bill? Yeah. Hold on, I'll keep trying here. Can you hear me at all? A little bit. I don't know where the no. microphones are in this thing. Really what? not on my monitor. Okay, so um, just a couple quick things. So as um, we put on the agenda and discussed a, a little bit, um, the public comments 
uh, and the public hearings are the only time that we're going to be taking comments during the council meetings moving forward. So we want to let people know that if you'd like to make a comment during either the uh, public hearing that's coming up now or the citizen comment period, please raise your hand. So on your screen at the bottom, you'll see um, a bunch of little uh, things, but under reactions, if you click on reactions, um, you can then click raise your hand. Staff will be watching and they'll unmute you. Um, so you can make a comment either during this public hearing or the um, citizen comment section. Um, and again, um, the intent of this is clearly not to limit citizens involvement, but it would be to it, it is to get the council meetings back on track and to get them focused on what they're supposed to be, which is council discussion and decisions. If you have comments, you have issues, please reach out to your elected council representative or the mayor or the whole council. And we have that information on the agenda. Um, and at that point, um, they'll they'll know what your feelings are in a topic item, things like that, and they can make sure that they're representing you. So I just wanted to get that out there before we got going with that public hearing. So if during this public hearing, as a reminder, if you want to talk, click on reactions and then click on raise your hand. Hey, um, Aaron, when I click on reactions, there is no raise hand. I could clap, thumbs up, give a heart, cry. I think that's because you're unmuted. Okay. All right, uh, so this is a public hearing. <clears throat> you, you, uh, is there an opportunity to talk about the issue that we have here dealing with chickens in the city? Uh, is there anybody who has a comment they'd like to make? Anyone have a comment? Any comment? Move to close the public hearing. Second. Got a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motions approved. Public hearing is closed. I'm not exactly sure I'm looking at this on the agenda. We do have action here, right? Is there yes. a... Yeah, there's an ordinance. Is that uh, under chicken code update or... Yeah. yeah. I'll move to suspend the rules. Got a motion to suspend the rules. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Motion to second to suspend the rules. Roll call. Fine. You got to let uh, Becky unmute. And I think Sarah wants on mute as well. She got it. You're good, Becky. Okay, Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dazeel? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. Hall? Yes. Motions approved, rules are suspended. Move to adopt 99-21. Second. Got a motion and second to adopt. Discussion? The amendments to 99-21. We don't have an ordinance number on there. I believe this is ordinance 7-21. Okay. 7 dash. Everybody got that? So we have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Comments and suggestions from citizens present. Comments are limited to five minutes, must address items not listed on the agenda. Comments are limited to issues that have an impact on the city and the Common Council may address at a future meeting and must not include endorsements of any candidates or other electioneering. An exception to the five minute limits may be made at the discretion of the mayor. As presiding officer, the mayor may allow public comment on agenda items during discussion by the Common Council following a motion and a second being made on said agenda, uh, on said agenda item. The mayor may place time limits on individual comments as he or she deems necessary. So again, this is your opportunity to speak on things that would uh, affect the city if you have something that you would like the city to address. Uh, keep in mind, you heard this before, we can't really see you, so if you have a comment, please uh, indicate that you would like to speak. You'll be unmuted, and, uh, and then uh, anybody that is, uh, keep in mind that we do need to get you unmuted if you're zoomed in. Uh, okay. Very clear is up. What's that, Aaron? Very clear, would like to uh, make a comment? Oh, we got somebody here at the podium right now. Oh, okay. 
Okay, um, my name is Becca, and at this time I declined to give my address and my last name because unfortunately in the past meetings this hasn't been enforced and has become a real safety issue. I noticed, like you just said, um, the commenting rules have changed. And what concerns me is that the change were, changes were made focusing on limiting what citizens can say rather than focusing on the safety of citizens. And I think that still needs to be addressed. Okay, thank you. Did, did I hear Mary Claire has a comment? I do, good evening. Uh, Mayor and council members, thank you so much. Mary Claire Potter, Hudson Chamber, 502 Second Street. I just wanna thank the city for your partnership with the uh, lights in the park. I know they continue to be up, which is great. They're gonna be up through uh, this weekend, but it has brought a lot of um, positive feedback and comments. People have loved those. I wanna give a special thank you to the Hudson Fire Department, the Police Department and the Public Works as you know, we have two films now filming in Hudson and they were all very instrumental in the first filming and we're moving on to the second filming and just to appreciate um, everyone's support of this project and all those that have, and the community members that have been extras uh, throughout the movie. It's exciting to have this happening in our community and I'm working with the director on um, some special things that we can hopefully do next December when these movies are uh, going to be premiered. So thank you everyone for your help and support. Thank you, Mary Claire. Any other comments? Any other comments? Yeah, we've got uh, Kay Emerson. Um, Brian, if you could unmute. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I'm concerned about the shutdown of, of a proposed citizens advisory board. Uh, without placing it on the agenda. There was a petition um, with a number of, of um, signatures requesting that a citizen advisory board be put on the agenda um, and it was shut down before it even made it to the council. So I'm curious as to how that works and why it would have been shut down um, without being put on the agenda. I don't know what you mean by- oh, My watch is talking to me, sorry. Um, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'd also like an update regarding the threat that we had last time. Um, it came immediately after I gave my name and address, and it was a pretty clear threat. Um, and I guess I, I wanted to get some follow up on that, and I never, um, I never did. So I'd like to know how that's being addressed. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Step forward, please. My name is Kelsey Janetsky. I live downtown. Um, last meeting, two citizens gave their comments. They gave their full names and addresses, and then there was a threat made. It was just addressed now. Um, that person was never required to give their name or address. They were not required to follow the rules as the two people prior were, and I think that that was wrong. I'm disappointed that you didn't address it, and I think it still needs to be. Then the comment rules were changed. And as another person just stated, it wasn't changed to protect the citizens and it wasn't changed in communication with the citizens. I have some concerns about transparency in the council right now. And I would really, really appreciate if in the future these changes are being made, you're actually addressing the city and talking to your citizens instead of making unilateral decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Any other comments? Any other comments? Hearing none, we'll close that portion of the agenda. Consent agenda. Approve the meeting minutes from the January 19th, 2021 regular council meeting. Please pull Appro it. <laughs> Approve the claims in the amount of $309,260.34. Approve operator's license listed on the list sheet. And approve the city attorney RFP as it was presented. Move to approve. Second. We have a motion a second to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item A. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. 
Dazeel? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. Hall? Yes. Motion is approved. Consent agenda is approved. Item A. Jim? Yeah, I have concerns about uh, uh, item A and the, the discussion about the presentation. Pretty much uh, it did not state that we had significant objection and concern expressed by council members. It kind of went like they just said it and it was okay. Uh, and it was not. We had uh, a lot of concern about the, uh, the detail, lack of detail and the uh, what the plan was. So I would least like to see a statement in there saying that uh, members or some of the members of the council were, were concerned about issues like um, right of way, uh, road closures, detours, uh, how it would interact with uh, the 11th Street Bridge project, that sort of thing, something like that. And we can make sure we get those updated. And then also just so you know, we are, staff is prepared in the mayor are preparing a letter to send with all of our concerns about this project, you know, now right. and in the future things. So once we get that figured out too, we'll get a copy to the council so you can see what we sent off as far as the concerns that were raised by council members at the meeting. Super. Thanks, Jim. Do you have a motion, Jim? Move to approve as, as uh, Aaron said, he would rewrite it, redo it. Second. Okay. Motion second to approve, discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion of possible action on reinstating Ordinance 8-21, Public Safety, State of Emergency. I would like to uh, move that we do not uh, continue this order under the advice of city attorney as a letter all that we received. I'll second. We got a motion and a second. Discussion? I'm not in agreement with that. As I think the uh, what we don't know is how the threat has changed. We're, if we re remove it, we're assuming that there is no threat. And I think that's the improper way to do that. Catherine, could you explain your letter? Well, um Yes, as I stated in my memo, and I think you all are aware of this and understand this, that we've got two statutes we're dealing with. Uh, one is the statutes that prohibit the city from um, adopting any different hours of operation than are set by state law. And then we have the emergency uh, powers, emergency orders and powers statutes. And the words, that are used in the emergency 323.11 and 323.14 are imminent threat of disaster. Those are the terms that are used in the statute. Some sort of civil commotion that presents an imminent threat of disaster. And so my concern is um, uh, well, first of all, let me back up. Circumstances have changed since the original emergency declaration was, ordinance was adopted. At that time, Minnesota was shut down and um, there was, you know, evidence of chaos on the streets shown by citations by uh, the crime that was occurring and so forth and uh, the difficulty the police department had in um, protecting public safety. But those circumstances have changed not only with the Minnesota regulations being eased, but I, I believe the um, situation on the ground in the city has changed so that there isn't that threat of hordes of people um, just creating chaos on the streets of Hudson. And we need to have a factual basis for extending the emergency declaration, um, especially considering the fact that the statutes prohibit restricting hours. I think we need to have a factual basis that we can identify and 
at, th at this point, that's problematic, in my opinion. I still have concerns about this as well. I, uh, since the Minnesota bars are only open until 10 o'clock, if we have them open till regular bar time, there's plenty of time for them to come over to Hudson and we're gonna have the same problems again. And I think just to jump in, I think part of this too is that we just don't know that for sure. I think it's anecdotally quite possible that we will see a large influx of people coming in after 10 p.m. Minnesota bar close, but we don't, and this is I think what Kathy's trying to get to is that we can't say that for sure. Um, and also we can't say what will happen when that occurs too. So I think that's where, when we started this, we knew that we couldn't, we can't do it forever, but we wanted to make sure that the public safety issue was resolved, which it has been based on the early closing. But at this point to continue, we want, more information, I guess you'd say. So the city attorney's recommendation is to not continue along with the emergency ordinance at this time, but if we see a rise in crime, issues with citations downtown, things like that, we can then bring that data back to the council to say, okay, we now have the data to back it up that checking every half an hour, we had this many Minnesota license plates in our parking lot. We, our citations jumped by this amount in these areas, things like that. We'll have the hard data again that I think then Kathy will feel comfortable if we wanna proceed with um, another emergency ordinance on it. So I'm not discounting that it very well could be a problem again, but as we've said, we don't have the hard data to back it up, which is what Kathy's stressing that we need. And the city um, just is going to be, I think, having the uh, tracking that later into the evening, which hasn't been going on during these uh, up until now. So there will be more uh, tracking of the Minnesota license plates later in the evening. The other thing that I just needed to inform you of is that my sense is. Um, since we're being con I was contacted by the tavern lien directly and uh, just that the threat of litigation is increasing you know I don't know if they will litigate but it's my job to at least tell you this is happening and uh, my sense of um, whether there's the the situation really fits the terms of the statute and the ongoing issue that's unresolved is that will a court say yes that you can change the hours of operation under emergency powers that's an open question we just don't have any any law on that and without law and with uh, a lack of facts you're in a more tenuous position we got the chief at the podium i was going to ask if the police chief was there yeah. we have a Big responsibility to protect our city employees, uh, particularly the police in this instance. And so I would like to ask Jeff for his opinion on this. Thanks. Sure. Everybody hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yep. So, yeah, I, I tend to agree with Kathy. I don't think um, what we're seeing right now meets the statutory requirements uh, to have such an emergency order. Um, what we saw early on at the end of November and early December, Minnesota was closed down and people were driving for three, four hours to come to Hudson just to party. I don't think it's realistic to think that's going to happen with, um, you know, with Minnesota being open even 50%. I mean, that opens up thousands of establishments for people to go in Minnesota. Uh, will we see an influx of people between 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock? Sure. Uh, not much different than what we did when Minnesota had an earlier bar close time than we did, you know, several years ago. Uh, but is it going to be to the level that would completely overwhelm um, our protective services? You know, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. I don't think it will be, but we'll be prepared either way. Yeah, 
Anybody else? I guess I I don't appreciate the logic that we have to take a risk. We have to risk our community in order to prove this. I get a little bit tired of the uh, um, willingness for <laughs> other organizations to threaten to sue us and let that run how we do our business. We need to decide if it's a risk or not. And if they want to sue us, fine, sue us. But if we don't think it's it's right, we shouldn't be doing it. We need to be, be a little bit tougher than we've been. I don't know. I uh, Years and years ago when I moved up here, I did not move to Hudson because of what happened on, on Saturday night when their bars closed. I don't know why, why I'm having trouble with this, this picture here. Uh, why their bars, their bars, when their bars closed early and they everybody came over here to drink. That's why I didn't come here. It was years and years before I was thought that this was, you know, it was really the acceptable and end of the reputation of tarnish was gone. So I don't want to see that happen again. We've spent too many years uh, building this community up to be a good place to be. Well, one thing I want to stress too is that I think you're right, Jim, because Hudson has a very safe downtown. We have a lot of very good restaurants and bars. It's a very safe place to come to and enjoy things. We had a really weird set of circumstances come together in December that unfortunately led to some negative things happening. Um, and we don't want to paint it like we've had this ongoing issue downtown and things. I mean, if it wasn't for about a month ago with the uh, Minnesota, you know, relocking back down again in winter and people you know, you can't get outside anymore um, to sit outside in patios and things like that, the holidays, you know, we had that unusual amount of things come together where we had some instances that happened that rightfully so drove the council to make the decision on the original emergency ordinance. Um, but again, we haven't had those problems in years. Our downtown has been very safe. It's been very welcoming for people to come down to and, and have a good time and enjoy themselves responsibly. Um, it's just recently we've had this issue and now it's, have we moved past it or not? Are we feeling comfortable that, you know, we can, we can reopen again and it'll be just like it was right before things, you know, kind of, we had a, a, an unfortunate um, a group of things happen. And so again, we can't tell you for sure if it will or not, but I do want to just stress it. Generally speaking for a very long time, downtown Hudson's very safe. We're just trying to make sure, the council's just trying to make sure that it continues that way. Um, and, I, and I definitely appreciate that um, because it's a, it's a huge drawing point for our community is our vibrant downtown and having people come to it. We made the decision earlier that we would gradually open and wait to see if there was a tipping point. And I think that we should continue with that plan. Anybody else? Question for our attorney again, for Kathy. Um, if we decide to lift the order tonight and then we have problems say this weekend can we turn right around and uh, put a new emergency order in well you'll have to i mean again you want to have a factual basis for doing it but you can certainly call a special meeting there's going to be uh, more intentional efforts to collect data and collect facts on um, just what's going on downtown. So if there's a factual basis showing um, what the statute requires, civil commotion, imminent threat of disaster, then yes. Um, right now, uh, just talking with the police chief, uh, I don't know that we have that factual basis at this point in time. But Catherine, that's because the situation we hit, we're not opening up the situation. We're controlling the situation now. Correct. So the, that, that keeps it. Yep. The numbers are low. You're right, Jim. The numbers are low because we've been closed. Um, so I think the answer is, Paul, is that yes, if we have problems, we'll have the documentation because we'll know what the problems are. Police department will have that information right. and we can bring that back. And then the council can decide if that warrants a reinstatement of some sort if you decide to let it expire tonight and i have the faith in the police department and what jeff has been doing 
and in controlling what's happening downtown. He's done a great job with him and his staff. Anybody else? All right, we got a motion and a second in front of us. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Nay. Is that, yeah, I think, can we do a roll call? Yep, Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dezeal? Yes. Weber? No. Atkins Hoggett? No. Hall? No. 3 3. 3 3. O'Connor votes three, aye. Yep. Four. Thank you. What did, what did the mayor vote? We couldn't hear that. Aye. Okay. Discussion of possible action to adopt the city of Hudson's retaining wall policy. All right. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Um, <clears throat> so tonight uh, is kind of a follow up on last uh, meeting's um, presentation on the proposed retaining wall policy. Um, and actually, items 8A through 8D all are involved with this. So that's why um, so just kind of keep in mind they're all kind of lumped together. So uh, we, uh, I presented about the uh, proposed retaining wall policy last meeting. It didn't uh, receive any anything to change uh, with the proposed policy. So uh, I'm bringing it back tonight for uh, a hopeful adoption of the policy, unless there's uh, things that have come up that, uh, that we're not aware of that we need to change before adopting it. So the first item, item A, is just the adoption of the re proposed retaining wall policy. Move to approve retaining wall policy. Second. second. Motion and second to approve. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion of possible action to amend ordinance 106-6 residential building permits. Uh, again, this is related to the retaining wall policy. So amending this ordinance would uh, provide a space in our in our ordinance for um, uh, requirements to follow the retaining wall policy on residential uh, for residential construction. So approving this would would give us the ability to enforce that policy on residential construction. I'll move to approve ordinance uh, 5-21 amending section 106-6. Sarah, we need to suspend. Oh, sorry. Move to spend. Second. Second. Motion is second to suspend the rules. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dezeal? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. And Hall? Yes. Motion is approved. Rules are suspended. Move to approve. Ordinance 5 21. Who seconded that? Sarah. Oh, thank you. Got a motion second to, uh, to approve. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Motion's approved. Discussion possible action to amend ordinance 106-19, retaining walls ordinance 106-19. <clears throat> So uh, as is similar to the last uh, item in that this uh, um, re uh, gives a requirement to follow the policy for commercial properties. Move to suspend the rules. Second. Second. And a motion and second to suspend the rules. Roll call. Morissette? Yes. Alms? Yes. Dezeal? Yes. Weber? Yes. Atkins Hoggett? Yes. Paul. Yes. Motions approved. Rules are suspended. Move to adopt. Our, in the packet here, I think it's ordinance. Ours says uh, adoption of ordinance 6-21, yeah, section 106-19. That's, 19, that's retaining correct. Walls. He's, he cited the. I just oh, want to make sure I got those numbers right. Okay. Got it. Okay. 
I'm sorry. Was there a second? No. Oh. Second. Got a motion to second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Discussion possible action to amend the City of Hudson's special assessment policy. All right, last one for me. <laughs> so uh, the amendments, the proposed amendments to their special assessment policy just follow the uh, uh, so uh, stuff contained in the retaining wall policy. So it enforces the uh, ability to do special assessments for retaining wall construction. Current or before this, we had no nothing in the special assessment policy for retaining wall construction. Move to approve the uh, amending the city of Hudson special assessment policy. Second. second. Got a motion second to approve. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. Thank you. Thank you, Dean. Uh, I don't have anything. Anybody? Um, Mayor, I'd like to put something on the next to council agenda, please. Sure thing. Um, I want to I want to bring back this citizens advisory committee uh, mm -hmm. idea. I'm hearing a lot of uh, support uh, from constituents around this idea. And since there are literally hundreds of cities um, in the country that benefit and have established a successful citizens community board, um, I'm really interested in exploring the idea and having that council discussion on whether or not we shouldn't or should pursue one for our community. So I'd like to get that back onto the agenda. Okay. And I, I, I agree with Sarah on that one. Also, I'd like to discuss this new policy about not allowing uh, comments during the uh, discussion of um, agenda items. We've, we talked about this several years ago and agreed that we're here to listen to our constituents and that they should have a voice in what's going on. So I would like to discuss that next time as well. And okay. decide what, as a group whether we want to implement that policy. I would support that. I think that there's some a little community clarification with that. Our ordinance says that it's up to the presiding officer as far as that goes. So we'd have to amend the ordinance, just so you know. We'd have to do okay. some sort of ordinance amendment to, to be able to adjust that. So just, and I can send you that before the next meeting so you know what it is. But just keep that in mind that any change would have to be an ordinance amendment. I just think we need clarity and agreement on that. The other thing that we need some clarity and agreement on is um, about the agendas themselves. Um, there seems to be some um, ambiguity in um, what has to be put on the agenda and what doesn't have to be put on the agenda. So I'd like to bring that to the council as well. What What do you mean, Joyce? Well, I've talked to Aaron about this, that there's... Um, that sometimes we'll ask for something to be put on the agenda and it doesn't get put on the agenda. Um, and okay. I'd like to make sure that we understand how the agenda is formed and um, what, what we can do if something isn't put on the agenda. Without getting in discussion, that has been a longstanding conversation in the past that we can certainly talk about, but there's a certain protocol that city of Hudson has always had, Joyce. So uh, I'd love the conversation. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, anybody else? Yep, I, one more, Mr. Mayor. I'd like to put on a brief discussion about the possibility of directing city staff to um, lay the groundwork for a diversity committee for Hudson. Okay. Anybody else? Is there a motion? Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Motion second. and second, second to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion's approved. We stand adjourned. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>